Hello students and welcome back to another algebra video. You know what to do, pause the video, try this problem in your notes and then unpause it to do it with me. Okay, we are asked to solve the system of linear equations. It does not say by graphing, it does not say by substitution, it does not say by elimination. So we can do this however we want to. Now, I notice uh, substitution might be easy because I could easily solve for x or y here, but elimination would also be easy, and elimination is my favorite. So, if I multiply this first equation by negative 2, then the x's will have the opposite, um, will have the opposite coefficients. So let's do that. I'm going to multiply the first equation by negative 2, and that gives me negative 2x minus 2y equals negative 6. Okay, awesome. So that's the first equation, and I haven't changed the second, so I'll just write that one underneath. 2x plus 2y equals positive 6. Now I'm ready to add these together, and my x's will cancel, they go away, they are eliminated. My y's, oh, negative 2y plus 2y is 0, and oh, negative 6 plus 6 is 0. So when I get something that is always true, when I get an equation that is a true statement, I know that there must be infinitely many solutions. And I can also see from the beginning, or like from this step, I can see that these are the same equations, but one is negative. The top is negative 2x minus 2y equals negative 6, and the bottom one is just the positive version. So I can see that they're the same line. One just got multiplied by like negative 1 or something. Okay, awesome. Good review from last video. Let's move on to what we have for today. Today we start section 5.6. This is one of two parts. Today we're just going to dip our toe into graphing linear inequalities in two variables. Okay, so we're going to take a step away from systems of linear equations for now, and today we're going to talk about linear inequalities in two variables. Okay, so our learning target is that you know what linear inequalities are. Hopefully you remember what an inequality is, but what is a linear inequality? That's what we're aiming to learn today. And our success criteria is I can check solutions of linear inequalities and graph to find solutions of linear inequalities. So we need to know what they are. What is a linear inequality? We need to be able to check solutions and graph them to find solutions. So know what they are, check, graph. Cool. Here is what a linear inequality in two variables is. An inequality, remember that means uh, these symbols right here, less than, less than, less than or equal to, greater than, or greater than or equal to. So these are not equations, they are in equations or inequalities. They're not equal, they're bigger than, they're smaller than, they're greater than or equal to, something like that. So an inequality written in the form ax plus by inequality symbol c. So that this circle here could be greater than, could be less than, could be less than or equal to, you know, all that good stuff. And what I notice is that, hey, wait a minute, that looks exactly like 
a linear equation in standard form. If I just put an equal sign where, you know, where they have their inequality sign, this is standard form of a linear equation. So that's why it's called a linear inequality is because this is, this is basically a line uh, in the coordinate plane. It's a little different than that, and we're going to see in section 5.6, we're going to see how it's a little different than just a line. Uh, the into variables part means that I have x and y are my variables. Of course, a, b, and c are going to be some numbers, and x and y are our variables, and right now we are just dealing with two variables. You'll get into three variables if you keep taking math classes, uh, but for now we are going to work with two variables. Alrighty. So, yes, here's another example of what one might look like, or of what two might look like. This is a linear inequality in two variables, and this is a linear inequality in two variables. We're not looking at them together as a system. We're not talking about systems of linear inequalities yet. <laughs> That'll be 5.7. For now, we are just looking at linear inequalities, because we need to know what they are before we can start talking about systems of them. Okay, so next vocab word is what is the solution of a linear inequality in two variables? What does it mean to like to solve a linear inequality in two variables? Well, it is an ordered pair, any ordered pair that makes the inequality true. So if I think of x plus 2y is greater than 2, if I plug these numbers in for x and y, and it gives me a true statement, it's a solution. Doesn't give me a true statement, not a solution. Kind of like uh, what we did in 5.1, when we checked solutions of systems of linear inequalities, or of linear equations, excuse me. Today is linear inequalities. All right, let's put all this information together, kind of see it at the same time. So a linear inequality in two variables can look like one of these four things. They're the same, the only difference is the symbol, the inequality symbol. And a, b, and c, of course, are real numbers. A solution is an ordered pair that makes the inequality true. Okay, so, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to check solutions. I want to know what they mean when they say an ordered pair that makes the inequality true. What are they talking about? I want to understand this solution of linear inequality stuff. So, the instructions tell us to tell whether the ordered pair is a solution of the inequality. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take our ordered pair, our x and our y, and we're going to plug them in. Plug them into the inequality, see what happens, see what we get. So, I have 2x plus y is less than negative 3, but, and let me color code here, x is negative 1. So I have 2 times negative 1. And y is 9. So I actually have 2 times negative 1 plus 9 is less than negative 3. What is 2 times negative 1? Negative 2 plus 9 is less than negative 3. What is negative 2 plus 9? Uh, 7. Because that's negative 2 plus 9 is like 9 minus 2. That's 7. 7 less than negative 3. Is this true? Is 7 smaller than negative 3? No, negative 3 is negative. Positive numbers are always bigger than negative numbers. So this is not true. This is no. So no. Negative 1, 9 is not a solution. Not a solution. Because we got something that wasn't true. When we plugged it in, the inequality wasn't true. So it's not a solution. 
Okay, now let's look at part B. And I'd encourage you, pause the video, try part B on your own. See if you can do part B on your own. And, uh, and then yeah, we'll do it together. So we have x minus 3y is greater than or equal to 8. We're going to color code x is 2 and y is negative 2. So when we plug these in, I have 2 minus 3 times negative 2 is greater than or equal to 8. Let's see. So this is 2. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. Greater than or equal to 8. 2 plus 6 is 8. Huh. Is 8 greater than or equal to 8? Yes, it is equal to, right? 8 is equal to 8. So, this is a yes. Yes, it is a solution. So because we got something that did work, this point worked when I plugged it in, I got something that was true, it is a solution. When I get something that is false, it is not a solution. Let's check our answer. 7 is not less than negative 3, so negative 1, 9 is not a solution of the inequality. And 8 is equal to 8, so negative, or excuse me, so 2, negative 2 is a solution. Ha ha! We were right. Yay! All right, there are some more vocab words that we need for the next part of our lesson. We need to know what is the graph of a linear inequality? What does that look like? Now, uh, remember that our success criteria, one of the pieces of our success criteria was that we could check solutions, and we just learned how to do that. We also need to know how to find solutions by graphing. So that's the part that we're about to get into. I'd also like you to remember back to chapter two, Remember when we would make a number line, right? I'd have x is bigger than 8 or something, and I would say, oh, 0, 1, 2, yada, yada, up to 8. This is a, you know, greater than or equal to, so I'm going to put a solid dot, and then because I'm bigger than 8, I'm pointing to the right. And I made a graph like that. So, that is the graph of a linear inequality in one variable. When we graph in two variables, we're talking about a coordinate plane. So in chapter two, we talked about in one variable. When we talk about two variables, we're going to have to graph some lines. So the graph in two variables that shows all the solutions that shows all the solutions of the inequality. So when we graph a linear inequality, we get a coordinate plane that shows you what all the solutions are, right? Because think back to chapter two. We didn't just have one number. Oh, nine is bigger than or equal to eight, done. No, there's tons of numbers that can work. 10 is bigger than eight. 11 is bigger than eight. 312 is bigger than 8. There's infinitely many numbers that are bigger than 8. So when we graph in two variables, we also need to have infinitely many points that are solutions. So notice how um, the graph of y is less than x minus 3 is the shaded half plane. We're going to talk more about half planes uh, on the next slide as well. A half plane is like, I mean, a plane, you can think of a plane as a, a sheet of paper that is being green screened out for some reason. <laughs> you can think of a plane as a sheet of paper. And if I'm talking about a half plane, I'm talking about half of the paper. So I'm taking half of the plane. And the coordinate plane is, well, a plane. That's why we call it a coordinate plane. 
So we're taking half of it. What we do is we draw this line. I, I take y equals x minus 3. I draw that line and then I shade the part of it that is a solution to y is less than x minus 3. So I'm going to shade either this half or this half. And then every point down here, every single point, even the ones in between the, the places where the lines cross on the graph, every point over here is a solution to this inequality. I can take any point in this shaded region and if I plug it into this inequality I should get a true statement. It is a solution. So that is what a graph of a linear inequality looks like. Let's talk a little more about this. The graph of a linear inequality in two variables shows all the solutions in a coordinate plane. So this shaded part shows you all the points that work with the linear inequality. All the points that are solutions. So all solutions of y is less than 2x lie on one side of the boundary line y equals 2x. So every time that we look at a linear inequality in two variables, we're going to think of the boundary line first. That's how they draw this line here, is with y equals 2x. And we call this the boundary line. Because it is the boundary between our two half planes. I have the plane on the left, and I have the plane on the right. One of those is a solution. One of those half planes holds all of the solutions to my linear inequality. So the boundary line divides the coordinate into the coordinate plane into two half planes. The shaded half plane is the graph of y is less than 2x. So anytime we graph a linear inequality in two variables, it's going to look something like this. We're going to have a line and we're going to have uh, a shaded side. We're going to draw a line and one of the sides will be shaded or colored in. So a dashed line, notice how they have a dotted line. It's not a solid line, it's a dotted line. A dashed boundary line means that points on the line are not solutions. So dashed is greater than or less than. A solid boundary line means that the points on the line are solutions. So solid line is greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. Just like, It's like having an open circle or a closed circle in chapter 2. Are we going to have a dashed line or are we going to have a solid line? Similar to chapter 2. Okay, I think it's time that you know kind of the steps to graph a linear inequality in two variables. So step one, graph the boundary line for the inequality. Use dashed line, use a dashed line for less than or greater than, use a solid line for less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Step two, test a point not on the boundary line to determine whether it's a solution of the, of the inequality. This step is important because in step three, when the test point is a solution, shade the half plane that contains the point. So step number two tells us, right, I have, okay, so here's my coordinate plane. I have x, I have y, and here's my inequality and my, my dashed line. Step number two tells me where to shade. Am I going to color this side or am I going to color this side? Step two tells me where to color. If it is a solution, I color where that point is. So if I'm testing this point and it is a solution, it means that this is the half plane with all of the solutions. If I test this point and it's not a solution, then that means that the other half plane 
must hold the solution. Okay, awesome. I think that it's time we try an example. And this will be our last example for today. We're gonna do a few, you know, m a little more complicated examples in the next video. For this video, we're gonna keep it nice and simple. Graph y is less than two in a coordinate plane. So remember, step one is to graph the boundary line. Graph. Graph the boundary line y equals 2. So let's do that. I'm going to do it in blue. So remember y equals 2 means that I'm at 2 on the y-axis and uh, my line goes through the y-axis at 2. Now I did a dashed line but that's not right. I should have a solid line because I'm less than or equal to I should be a solid line. Okay, step number two, test a point. Test a point. So, um, on one side, test a point on one side uh, of the boundary line. So let's test uh, this point, this point. Uh, it's two, three, and we have y is less than or equal to 2. The y coordinate of this point is 3, so I'll plug that in, and I get 3 is less than or equal to 2. Is that true? Is 3 less than 2? No, not true, which means that I'm going to shade the other side of the plane. I'm not shading up here because that wasn't a solution. And remember, the place that I'm shading, this is all of the solutions. So everything down here gets shaded. All right, and that, that's step three. Step three was to shade or color in, uh, shade the solution. Okay. Now, another way that you could have done this, if you're like Mrs. Dodge testing points, ugh, so lame, so yesterday. If you don't like testing points, well, you can also just think y is less than 2. All of the numbers that are smaller than 2 are going to be below the line y equals 2. So that's another way that you could think about it. All right, we can test and see, or we can check and see if we were correct y equals 2, use a solid line because the inequality symbol is less than or equal to. They tested 0, 0. 0, 0 is an easy point to use. A uh, very easy point to test, so we'll probably use that one tomorrow. For the, I wanted to show you in this example that it doesn't matter what point you use to test, but 0, 0 is the easiest one. Okay. Uh, and so they tested 0, 0, and they got that it was true, so they shaded down here. We also shaded down there, so our graph looks exactly like their graph, and we were correct. Yay! All right, now is the time to ask questions. This is Phil. Phil the cat. Phil has questions. So he speaks his questions and he gets answers. If you are confused about what happened in this video, it's time to ask questions. If you're pretty confident in what we did in this video, but like, you know, you're still, mm, you're iffy, that is a good time to try the homework. And then if you have questions, ask them. And if you totally understood what we did in this video, it would be good of you to help others and answer their questions. So if you have questions, ask them just like Phil. Nothing wrong with asking questions. All right, and assess your understanding of the learning target and the success criteria. Do you know what a linear inequality is? And do you know how to graph their solutions and how to check solutions? And do you understand how all the things work together? Test your or assess your understanding.
Okay, here are some practice problems that you can do to practice the skills that you have learned in this video. The first set of problems is like example one. Uh, tell whether the ordered pair is a solution. See if the point works when you plug it in. This set of questions isn't exactly like anything we did in this video. Uh, it's about testing points. So tell whether the ordered pair is a solution of the inequality. So for example, if I look at zero, negative one, oh, that's not shaded. So no, not a solution. And, uh, actually I'll leave that there. And the last set of problems is like example two. So graph the inequality in a coordinate plane, make your boundary line and shade the correct half plane after you test a point. As always, we're going to end our video with a launch. This launch comes from Ralph Waldo Emerson, and he says, the only person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. The person you decide to be. So, you may have heard someone say, like, I was just destined to be, you know, lazy, or I was just destined to work at McDonald's for the rest of my life. Like, I guess this is just what I was destined for. And when people say destined, they mean like, this is just what I'm supposed to do in life. I guess this is what I'm called to. I'm called to work at McDonald's or work at, you know, Burger King or Safeway for the rest of my life. Or, you know, some people say, well, I'm just destined to be a jealous person. Like, I, I just am a jealous person. So I have to micromanage everything that my boyfriend does or everything that my girlfriend does because I'm just a jealous person. That's just who I am. It's who I'm destined to be. And uh, the only person that you are destined to be, the only person that you are destined to become, or the only person that you have to be, is the person you decide to be. You get to choose if you're a jealous person or not. Are some people more prone to jealousy than others? Of course. If you're, you know, as a child, if your siblings are always stealing your toys, you could be more jealous than somebody that, you know, always has whatever they want as a child or something. So you might be more prone to jealousy, but you decide whether or not you're, you're going to feel jealous and act on that jealousy. You get to decide. You can say, no, no, not a big deal. Don't need to be jealous. Or you can say, oh my goodness, this is so important. I'm so jealous, you know? Um, you are not destined to work at Fred Meyer for the rest of your life. You choose to work at Fred Meyer for the rest of your life. Or, you know, to, to work at Burger King for the rest of your life. You choose whether or not you want to go to college and, you know, make some... Uh, um, make a get a degree that you that will get you a job that you want you get to choose if you want to go into the military and you know serve the country in that way you get to choose if you want to get some training that will get you a nice job or if you want to you know make minimum wage or you know bag groceries every day for the rest of your life you get to choose that and there's nothing wrong with choosing that there's nothing wrong with choosing that. There's nothing wrong with working at Fred Meyer. I have a lot of, <laughs> I know a lot of good people that work at Fred Meyer. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. But it needs to be your choice. And you need to accept that if you're doing something, it is by your choice. And you can choose to stop doing that. You can choose to continue doing that. So if you like working at Burger King, or you like being a jealous person, continue. By all means, continue. But the only person you are destined to be is the person you decide to be. So you don't have to do anything that you don't choose to. And anything that you're doing, you're choosing to. Could be subconsciously, but you're still choosing. Everything that you do is a choice. What will you decide? That is my launch for you today. Take it with you as you go throughout your day. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Bye.